Alright guys, welcome back. And unless this is your first time here, I'm the Northwest Fisherman Chris, and today we're going to be cracking open the August Monster Bass Platinum Box, which conveniently comes in a bag again this month. I'm, you know, I'm not ever going to be upset when we get these in these bags, because these bags are super useful, plus I can give them to my buddies, because I think I have like eight or nine of these now, and the bags are they're just so useful. Um, but let's get cracking in this thing. Let's see what we got in our book here. First up, there's boxes. Get a free Plano Series 3600 tackle box with any order of $75 or more Co using code P36 at checkout. You guys can go ahead and use that. Um, let's see, there's the lives on Wednesday. The Ultimate Frog. I'm actually kind of curious about this. I'm, I I don't know how I feel about the exposed talk, but we'll see how it goes. Bait selection guide, blah blah blah. Garlic balsamic glazed beef short ribs. That's not really fishing, but I'm also not upset about the uh, the recipe there. I'll have to try that. Uh, finding finding the perfect mate. So that's gonna be your jig trailers. <clears throat> Keep on punching in the summer heat, or I guess just in the summer. <laughs> uh, then people who got their PB with monster bass stuff. All right, let's get cracking in this box. In this box bag, box bag. Yeah, I don't know. Um, let's do this hard bait first. So we got a catch mock K popper. This is a 70 series. Sits vertical, spits pop, spits water, and walks. Okay. I think I've I've gotten one of these before. I don't think it was from Monster Bass. I think I might have just picked these one of these up at the store. These things actually do spit water pretty good. Um, they're I mean I like poppers, and it's kind of hard to make a bad popper. Like you you kind of have to actively try to make a bad popper. The color on this guy is American Shad, and it's 0.35 ounces. So that would make it like what is that? That's just under 3 8 7 ounce. That's what, like 5 sixteenths? Anyway, you got a nice black back fading into a darker blue here. You've got your little shad spot right there, your bluegill spot. You've got this nice pinkish lateral transition moving into more of a chrome. The whole thing's highly reflective, and you get to the belly. It's kind of like a semi transparent pearl white up back here. And then you've got more white up towards the mouth. The mouth, of course, is bright red. And then you've got that nice feather treble. Uh, with these hooks being small, I am mixed feelings about that. I like larger hooks on my poppers. Um, but the feathered tail is a must. And these um, treble hooks here seem look to be pretty good quality, even though that they're not EWG style, which, once again, is one of my ideal once I can't really flex the hook so that's a good sign I, I know I've used this popper before I don't remember where I got it but it's not a bad little popper um, but it is not one for a lake where you're hunting for giants or there are possibility of being huge fish because I feel like the the rear travel hook because of their downsized size has more of a tendency to catch them in the gills but this is still a very solid popper. Uh, you know what, let's just do that frog. <clears throat> I've seen this a couple times in stores, and of course, we all know live target baits are kind of, okay, in my opinion, they're overpriced and not really worth it. Plus, a lot of them are kind of gimmicky. Um, if you love them, you love them. That's, I'm not trying to convince you otherwise of that. Um, the color on this guy here is green yellow. It is two inches and it's three quarters of an ounce. That's kind of heavy for a product, I feel like. Alright, let's get this out. So it comes with extra legs, which is super nice. Let's see if we can get this out of here. There it goes. These rubber bands off these legs here, real quick. So the main body itself is actually hard. It's not it's not a soft frog like most frogs. <clears throat> I 
do do do. Get this rubber band off here. So, I wonder how well this thing flows. These legs do move. So, they got little appendages here where it rolls like that. So, I think you can just get away with just kind of gently popping it, <clears throat> popping it like you would with a walking frog, and these legs will just return. I think that's the idea here. The feet are cupped to catch water, so they will pull back and elongate as it goes, which is neat. And then they'll pull forward. But I'm not sure how I feel about this exposed tuck here. That, and it's not that large. I have to see how it actually goes. Um, of course, because it's a live target bait, it's it's got a great color scheme on it. It's not a conventional des design, but the colors on it, it it looks like a frog. This is definitely one I'll try, and then I will try not to lose it. Because once again, I'm not sure how I feel about that big exposed hook like that. But it looks like a bull, bullfrog. Not a bullfrog, but a frog. Um, I don't know my frogs that well. I'll be honest about that. I don't really worry about my frog species. <laughs> But, yeah, having these replacement legs is super nice because I don't expect those are going to last very long. And it looks like they just slide on and these slide off. I'll definitely have to try this, see what it's like. But I'm going to have to be careful where I throw it because I have a lot of tulies around me. And this is not going to last in the tulies. I'm going to break this in the tulies. But, let's move on. Uh, any more park baits? Oh, here we go. Greenfish Hammerhead and White Half Ounce Buzzbait. I love buzzbaits. And it's kind of hard to make a bad buzzbait, honestly. Um, I've had Hammerhead products before. The biggest downside to them... Yep, there we go. Biggest downside to the Hammerhead Buzzbaits is there is no bait keeper on this. And I'm one of those guys that always throws a trailer on buzz baits, spinner baits, jigs, uh, chatter baits, whatever. Other than that, it's a nice, it's a nice smaller size buzz bait. White on white, great color scheme. Fish this anywhere in the country and it would do well. Um, another thing that I'd like to point out that I don't absolutely love about this is the skirt isn't tied on, it's just put on with this band. But this ridge here is large enough that this band typically does not slide off till this band gets weak and then the skirt's gone. That's that's just an observation. Um, realistically, uh, most people probably won't have that issue with it unless you leave your tackle box out in your truck or something like that. Or if you just fish the bait a tremendous amount. Um, but it's... It's a good buzz bait. It's a good design. Nice blade. Not too big, not too small. Um, you can bend this, pull it up away from it so it doesn't catch. So it doesn't catch. So that's that's nice. Or you can bend it down a little bit so it just barely catches on the top of this to make a little bit of extra clatter. Some guys like to do that. Some guys don't like to do that. I kind of play it by ear. If whatever buzz bait I tie on is clattering and I'm not really catching anything, I'll bend it up a little bit, make it not clatter. See if that helps. Sometimes they just don't want the buzz bait. All right. Last up for hard baits. In here, we've got this Bows jig. This is a 3 8 ounce jig. Chartreuse and root beer. I can already tell I'm going to like this color scheme. Because it's kind of it's kind of like a bluegill intimidator. Like whenever they say chartreuse and root beer or any type of root beer and there's still green in it, you're gonna end up with like a pseudo bluegill pattern, and that's exactly what this is. Um, <clears throat> skirt, of course, is bluegill and chartreuse on the bottom. Then you get up here higher, gets into more of a lettuce color in the skirt and then you've got some black and or not even black and red i'd say that's like a super deep brown and red this is a good looking jig 
with the exception of the fact that once again this jig has a rubber band on it versus just having a tie on it. Now unlike that hammerhead um, buzz bait, this one actually does have a type of a bait keeper on it. It's not the ideal but it is way better than nothing. I actually kind of prefer this plunger style looking guy here over just the regular like formed barb that a lot of baits have. <clears throat> The head on this is nice, so the bait will just stand up when it's on bottom, and the buoyancy of whatever trailer you put on will allow it to just boo, whatever out there. The br the grass uh, wow the grass guard on this is about perfect actually. Like this is this is an ideal weight. It's not it's not so heavy that you have to worry about it possibly not allowing you to hook up with a fish but it's not so soft that you're still going to catch on every piece of debris in their lake um, you could maybe cut one or two strands off of this to make it a little bit better but I would leave it the way it is alright let's get to our soft plastic and see what we have for trailers for this Oh, that's a dope sticker. We'll talk about this super awesome sticker in a minute. Um, it looks like we have two very solid trailers for this. We'll go over this this one first. This is a Jean LaRue. Uh, this is called a Hammer Craw. This is Sooner Run is the color. Packaged in Guatemala. You know, let's just get it out. So this is a nice bait. This is more of a moving bait, in my opinion, to let these kickers do their thing. Um, something more of a trailer that you'd want to swim, probably, or just want to fall a lot, because it's going to have a lot of action on the fall. Let's go ahead and throw that on our jig here and see what it looks like. Get an idea of where we want to come out. And this is another thing about this brush card. It is just supple enough that it's not an issue. Um, to rig things, it's not too stiff, then it makes this difficult. Do, do, do. Feed this on here. This trailer's pretty dense. It's pretty dense. I came out a little bit sooner than I wanted to, but it's good enough. So this is what we end up with. This, this color the Sooner Run, it's like a super dark green pumpkin with a little bit of red flake in it. But the red flake's only on the top. So, that's that's pretty good. That looks pretty nice. And the water, that's going to float, I think. These should float, even though they're pretty dense. Um, that looks good. I like that a lot. Give that a shake. Give that skirt down around it. Yeah. It's just the perfect length for this skirt. It's not going to inhibit the movement of these appendages at all. Excuse me. Thirsty. Oh, the smoke up here has been pretty rough. But, yeah, no, that's, that's a super sweet trailer right there. Plus, this would be pretty good for um, not necessarily punching, um, I feel like this would be pretty decent for flipping. I would flip this and then just kind of swim it back. And just kind of bounce it around a little bit. Maybe throw it on like a like five sixteenths or three eighths um, Texas rig. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, the, the next bait up is the KVD. From Strike King, the Rodent, and Blue Craw, Red Flake. This is a killer bait. Like, it's kind of why I wanted to do the other one first. Is because this is the Rodent. It's just good. Um, it's fantastic for everything you use it for. Jig trailers, flipping, punching, whatever. This is, this is just a really good, nice profile, nice size. Does what you want it to do. It catches fish. It's a good all-around bait. Um, necessarily, if I was going to 
truly rig this the way I want to for this jig head, I would probably cut off the first like four ridges on there. So you end up with a bait that looks more like that, more like mass around the hook itself. So I'm not gonna completely rig this one up like that. Uh, so you got your, your little paddles back here. This will definitely float perfectly upright. This this is pretty great. I'll let you guys get a better look at this. Blue green, blue, green, red flake. Yeah, blue craw, red flake. So you've got like a green pumpkin, a little bit of red flake in there with just a head of blue. It's, it's really good. It's really, really good. Get this thrown back in here. Now, kind of the oddball bait for this month's box is this Grande Bass 8 inch uh, Mega Tail Rattlesnake in Morning Dawn. I like Morning Dawn. I think it's a fantastic color. Um, I definitely fish it a lot and I will definitely fish these a lot. However, I feel like this is the oddball thing that doesn't really go in this sack because you're not going to want to throw this on the back of the buzz bait. However, this is a pretty cool bait. So the whole entire main part of the body here has got ridges. So it looks a lot beefier than it really is. The actual center section of it is pretty small. And then you've got this wonderful ribbon tail and that nice pearl to pink. Nice pearl to pink. This is a great bait. Um, Carolina, Texas rig, whatever. Um, I would even fish this weightless um, and then just kind of pop it around while I do its thing or even fish on like an eighth. Throw this on a shaky head. This this is a good bait. I, I really, really like fishing ribbon tails. The only problem with fishing ribbon tails is you have to have for sure fish big enough that are going to commit to taking the whole thing or you're going to end up with a lot of tailless ribbon tails. But, last but not least, this month's sticker, and I saw this when I pulled this out of the packaging when it came in, and I was super excited. Don't know how many of you guys are Beastie Boy fans at all, but this is pretty cool. So this is kind of like a tribute to the License to L al album from the Beastie Boys. Makes me super happy. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put this yet, but I'm going to put this on something because this is pretty cool. Um, overall, for this month's sack, or this month's box bag, sack, bait bag kind of deal, whatever we're going on here. <clears throat> Super excited about the sticker, obviously. Um, these rattle tails, I will definitely fish this. The rodents, this is a super solid bait. These hammer cross, I will definitely give these a try. Um, I think ideally these this would be a really good um, Texas rig bait, uh, just because of its density and the swimming action that I think would be better suited for like a Texas rig or something that's more of a moving bait than just a uh, jig trailer. So this this is going to be pretty good. This is a good color too. Um, the jig, this is this is a good jig. Um, even though I'm not wild about the skirt, the way it's tied on, this this looks great. And I can always just retie this skirt. That's not that big of a deal. Um, but this is this is neat. I I like this jig a lot. I like this a lot. Uh, the popper. Only thing I can hate on it is the small hooks, but it's it's also not a full-size popper. I would consider this a smaller popper to begin with. And I know this is a good popper the way it works. Um, it's just I don't like the smaller hooks. That's just me. Buzzbait, I will definitely fish this. Um, I really don't think you can have too many buzzbaits. Um, buzzbaits just, they they do a lot of work 
and it is not hard to lose a buzzbait. I really like flipping him into the weeds and the trees and everything else I will flip a buzzbait into, no problem. Um, heavily wooded areas, I will flip a buzzbait into. I, no remorse, I don't care. I'm happy about this because I can't have enough buzzbaits. The live action frog, which I think kind of ate up a lot of, actually I know this ate up a lot of value in it. I am going to have to fish this to make a decision. I just really don't like that exposed hook on it. And I know this is probably like a $20 value. Yeah, this had to have been up there because live target baits are always expensive for kind of no, re no reason. Um, some guys love them. I am not one of those guys. I kind of feel like majority of the time they're kind of gimmicky. Like, this could have been really, this could have been a better bait if it didn't have that exposed hook. But then I don't know how they would have made this a hollow body with these appendages. Like, I'm just going to have the fish it to try it. I am just happy at least they gave us extra legs with it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the sack. We're starting to roll into fall here, guys. Um, we're getting there. Um, I mean, it's, it's mid-August now. Almost to September. I like fall fishing. I like fall fishing a lot. Um, the fish are spread out. They're moving around. They're going to start feeding really, really hard here soon. Um, plus, every day that goes by gets us closer and closer to jerkbait season. And we're still prime... Uh, top water season basically the whole water column right now is completely open depending on where you live some fish are going to be deep some fish are going to still say sitting shallow and but one thing's guaranteed they're all pretty active um yeah you know, this is this is my one of my favorite times of the year to fish and for the most part i'm pretty excited about this bag the only thing i don't really like is the popper and the frog everything else is kind of a hit so it kind of takes the value out of it it's it's not the best bag it's not the worst one I've ever gotten um, I wish there was just some way that I could like opt out of getting live target and like longer hunt baits because majority of them I feel are junk or gimmicks but that's just me somebody watching this might be a huge live target fan and catch all their best fish in live target if that's true good for you i'm not a big fan um but yeah that's that's basically it guys so i will go ahead and let you guys go um watch out for the boaters stay safe you know the bugs are going to start getting pretty bad here soon at least where i'm at they're not bad yet um, temperatures, sun, keep your skin protected, the important things. But remember, FAFO, fish run, find out. Take care, guys.